Hi there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice, and welcome back to the studio. It's been quite some time since we had a video release, and I figured that since it was Inktober, now would be the perfect time to jump back into the groove. Today's ink sketch will be of a pumpkin, and it's not a part of the National Inktober prompt, but I did want to participate, so I decided with it being so close to Halloween, a pumpkin would be a perfect subject. Started out by lightly sketching in the pumpkin on my Master's Touch watercolor journal paper, erasing that, and then taking a Sharpie fine line waterproof black marker to go ahead and ink in the pumpkin. After wetting the pumpkin, I started to block in color by using cadmium yellow for the um, first little color splashes. And then I'm going to take a mixture of the burnt sienna along with the um, French ultramarine in order to create the shadow color and start blocking in that shadow color as well. Next we're going to move on to the stem um, which was made from yellow ochre and a mixture of cat yellow and French ultramarine. Now in just a moment you're going to notice that the video will cut to sort of a steel here um, and it's because I forgot to press record but the first layer of orange was based in with a mixture of the Windsor yellow as well as the Alenzarin crimson and I just based that in. Um, by the way I should tell you guys that I am using the Windsor and Newton professional paint stick set. Um, to do this composition, I just cut those paint stick down and put them in half pans in order to create a palette. Um, you'll see after that that I just took a little of the burnt umber and went in to start base along the side of the stem in order to darken up the shadow areas as well as to give that green a little bit more of an earthy tone um, because I was trying to give the impression that the stem was, you know, getting past right. Now here you see that I am basing in the uh, darker orange mixtures in order to create the shadow areas of the pumpkin. And that particular orange was a mixture of cad yellow along with the alenzer and crimson. And then I actually went back into the center of each of those after putting the shadow color um, along the edge of each one of those little you know ridges. I went back in and on top of that used the original orange um, that I put down for the first layer in order to just uh, even out that that color. I didn't want any hard lines um, but I did want to add texture so um, I was working to try to get it smooth and even sorta. Of. <laughs> You'll also notice that I am doing every other um, kind of ridge of the pumpkin um, in order to make sure that the ones that I am doing aren't touching because I didn't want any of that paint to kind of disperse into the next ridge. I kind of wanted to make sure that I kept it as crisp as I could. Um, and for all intents and purposes, I was liking the way that it was starting to progress. Um, also, I should tell you guys that I did use a Master's Touch number 10 round synthetic squirrel as well as a number six round synthetic squirrel by Grumbacher in order to um, you know paint in the paint on this composition. You guys may also notice that the voice level in throughout the video the voice over level should I say throughout the video are kind of uneven and that's because I must admit this video was very chop and paste. Um, it's been about four or five months since I shot a video so I did my best trying to jump back on the bicycle and ride as they would say. So um, after I got all of the color based in on the pumpkin and I was satisfied with that, I decided that I would go and add shadow to the very bottom of the pumpkin where the um, shadow would be cast up onto like the very part of the pumpkin where it meets the table. And then I'm just going to do a little bit more touching up on the stem and just making sure that I have all of my um, color levels and variations right as far as the paint is concerned. And as I looked at it, I, it just felt sort of stark to me. So I let it dry and then I decided that I would go in and splatter some paint. And um, in case you guys didn't know, splattering paint is a great way to add movement to a picture. Um, it seemed to me that the pumpkin was kind of a little dead, although I was liking the way that the color was being punched up. So I did the splattering in the back to sort of add movement to it, give it some flow um, throughout the painting.
After everything was said and done and dried with the paints, uh, I still wanted to punch up the color more. Now, although I know Windsor & Newton was, uh, was pretty vibrant um, when I paint with it in other situations, I think this paper sort of soaked up the color and made the uh, composition dull. So I decided to grab my King Art uh, Professional, or what they're called King Art Pro, color pencils to jump in and punch up the color on the uh, composition. Now I used a few different ones. If I'm not mistaken, I used a burnt orange. Um, I can't remember what the lighter orange was called. Uh, I used a cool gray, a black, um, a olive green, uh, and the brown was, oh, burnt umber maybe i can't remember exactly what the brown was called either but you know i just chose the brown that was closest to the color i had already been using then i jumped right back on in with my black fine liner to enhance color and sign afterwards i grabbed my white prismacolor color pencil because it's really opaque in order to do the highlights well guys that pretty much wraps it up don't forget to like comment share subscribe visit us on all our outlets and as i always tell you just keep painting <music>